Okay, good afternoon. Uh, what I'm going to talk about uh, this afternoon is basically on behavior emotion. I think uh, a lot of us uh, understand that uh, when we start to drive, uh, sometimes under some pre-emotional condition, you find that we become aggressive uh, or uh, we become non-aggressive drivers. And the change can occur pretty quickly, you know. Uh, especially if uh, you have problem with your spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, you find that you start driving on a manner that you're not supposed to drive. That's one condition. The other condition is that in Malaysia, where I just shifted, actually I'm from uh, Nanyang Technological University in Singapore, uh, we found that uh, a lot of uh, truck drivers, bus drivers who drive for long distance and they get sleepy, okay? And we tend to try, in this particular study, we try to group them together under what we call the driver behavior in terms of emotion. So let me proceed with that. <clears throat> okay, as far as my outline here, I would like to uh, uh, first uh, introduce what I mean by emotion in the first place so that at least we have some, some idea in this case here and how we actually detect emotion from engineering perspective and from the psychological perspective. Because I think in order to understand emotion, we cannot just look at it from the engineering perspective. Or else, I have seen a lot of work that people uh, does in terms of understanding emotion. When engineers talk about it, they have their own set of mind. But when you talk to psychologists, they have multiple set of mind, not just one. So I think it's even a greater challenge in this case here, trying to understand emotion. And we engineers try to detect emotion Okay, especially in areas of speech. Uh, of course, the question that we always ask is, how can we force the driver to talk? Maybe today, in today's technology, uh, we don't talk to our, our car more often, but in the future, maybe there will be a lot more opportunity for us to talk to the car. For example, if anybody has got GPS today, you find that, hey, we start pr pressing button you know, to go to where we want to go. In future, I'm very sure there will be a lot of people talking to the GPS machine, talking to the car and say, hey, I want to go to uh, my IV 2010 uh, symposium, you know. So he will just say, okay, uh, let's go. Uh, so those kind of communication are becoming uh, uh, more plausible, you know, that we are going in that kind of direction. Uh, of course, uh, in order to do all these things, uh, in, in our preliminary work, uh, this is uh, part of my PhD student work, uh, which is still in Nanyang Technological University, uh, we, we do collect some data corpuses and also we make use of standard uh, data corpuses from the uh, Berlin data, data set, uh, which actually uh, used last year on the uh, interspeech uh, conferences. Uh, we do some experimental results, and it, it is uh, very promising, uh, and I would like to uh, discuss a little bit more on that. Okay, just a quick one here. Up to 300 people are killed every year in accidents where the driver has fallen asleep at the wheel. Before you feel too tired, pull off the road into a services or other safe area. Drink some strong coffee, and take a quick nap while the caffeine kicks in. If you're having a nap, you've left your lights on, sir. All right, cheers. Think. Don't drive tired. Okay, so that's what it is. So that's what, what uh, this particular project is all about. Uh, we're trying to detect a uh, sleepy driver. And I think uh, it is interesting if we can really detect uh, the sleepy driver at a particular situation rather than just looking at the facial. This could be one point is looking at the speech, okay? So let's see how we can go about doing this. Now, if you notice that as far as the psychologist's perspective is concerned, uh, they propose that emotion influences judgment directly by serving an experiential and bodily uh, information regarding how one feels about the object of judgment. So what are we going to do as far as emotion is that emotion can affect driver. Everybody knows about it. Okay, like I mentioned, pre-emotion. Okay, or even in that case, uh, while you are driving, you get angry with another driver, you know, because it's too slow. Okay, you, you really get agitated and you really want to force that guy. I have seen a situation where I'm driving maybe too slow, you know. Somebody just drives too close to you that you just couldn't help it but just, just go to the side, you know. So I think that is the safest bet. So this thing do happen, you know. So I think uh, in this case here, we have to be extra careful. So, but uh, one thing we know for sure, 
in terms of this particular diagram, if you, look, you take a look at the, uh, uh, that, that particular area here, uh, what happened is that uh, all of us, when we start learning to drive, you know, we start using our conscious mind to drive. Okay, so we, we learn how to operate the particular uh, vehicle, and then after that, uh, we drive slowly. You know, we know how to make use of the, uh, the clutch, the brake, and, and whatever system that uh, you have, and you start using your conscious mind to drive. As we, uh, we are driving, we are very familiar with the car, we start to switch from conscious mind to subconscious mind. So that's what we are doing. And when we own our own car, you know, and when you start driving from home to work, work to home, home to work, work to home, you just don't care anymore. So you start using all your subconscious mind and you don't really think anymore. Well, one day, what happened? You suddenly saw a dog just run across and straight away your mind switched from a subconscious to a conscious mind again because you jammed the brake. Okay, that's what happened to human. So that's what we are doing is basically we start to really learn Okay, and this is the driver knowledge, and this particular loop is what we are doing, and in cases where we have some external forces, so that's what we have. And one of these external forces that we are interested in is basically when we have pre-emotional, okay, or when we are very tired, you know. We actually, in our, in our data corpus that we have here, is we get somebody who just flew in, okay, and get him to drive. Of course, uh, we have this special car that has uh, the brake on the other side. Okay, so that uh, we can make sure that if anything happens, you know, we really have those brakes taken care of. And, and we really allow this guy, you know, this sleepy driver, real sleepy driver who just uh, came down from the plane. He travels to Europe uh, and we have a few. In fact, we have altogether six subjects and they just flew in. Okay, either short distance travel or long distance travel. And we really allow this guy to drive on certain type of roads. Okay, so we've got to be extra careful on that <laughs> or else I'll be in trouble with the DMV. So the driving activity, uh, that is what we do. I, I will just uh, cut short and go through the real thing. I think that's what we want to see as far as the real thing. Uh, fundamentally, uh, most of the work that people have done that I have seen, they use MFCC for most of the speech uh, detection algorithm, whether you are going to detect the speech itself, the speaker, or even in terms of emotion, everybody is using this, okay? So in the end, what do we have? We generate that data corpus, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of data corpus, I have the Berlin database, okay? And this one here you can easily download uh, from, the, uh, from the internet. Uh, and uh, what we have is 10 speakers for this particular case. I will show you later why this particular database is required in our experiment. <coughs> Your question right now is that, why do I need this database, you know? After all, I want to study about driver and why do I have this database? Uh, let me first describe about the data, data corpus or database here, okay? Uh, and of course, we have our own database just to complete the uh, sequence here. The one that we have is a German database and the one, the NOR database is actually the American speakers, okay? So that we have a combination of American and the German uh, databases. In fact, I, we just completed one set of database which is based on the Asian database based on Malaysian speakers and also based on Vietnamese speakers, okay? So if anybody interested, you can just contact me in getting those databases, okay? Uh, but for this experiment that we have done, which is uh, about last year, these are the two databases that uh, we will use. Just bear that in mind. And uh, now, of course, databases are, are not complete unless you do the survey. So we did all the survey. And uh, of course, in our survey, we found that out of all these databases, you can only make use of happy, angry, and sad. Okay, and of course, neutral is the emotionless uh, state. So basically, we need neutral. Whenever you are happy, you still have neutral. When you are sad, you still have neutral, which is always hidden in you. But disgust, surprise, is something which is very difficult. You know, you ask someone to explain, you know, when they listen to some speech and say, do you think that is disgust? I'm not sure. <laughs> Nobody can tell you exactly whether that particular speech tells you it's a disgust. Especially when you have a German speaker, and here you are, uh, somebody who listened to a German speaking who don't understand German at all. And you try and ask him, 
is he disgusted? <laughs> you know, listen to the speech. I think it's going to be a real challenge in that way. So you find that uh, like disgust there, uh, a lot of people think that disgust is more angry uh, rather than disgust. Okay. So these are the survey that we did to to ensure that the databases uh, is basically a valid database that we want to do for the experiment. But what is more interesting is that not only this database. Uh, later, I will show you that some of other work that people has done where they indicate. Uh, as far as emotion is concerned, there are three basic emotions plus the emotionless state, which is neutral, that the psychologists normally consider as what they call basic emotion. And this is what uh, most of us will use as far as these three basic emotions. And there are reasons why we use these three basic emotions. Okay? Okay, let me just proceed with that. And the data corpus, what we have done, is a road in Singapore, an isolated road. Uh, and uh, those are the, uh, the uh, 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 as far as the road is concerned, it covers, and uh, some of this area uh, is really a heavy traffic area, okay, but uh, uh, we actually uh, have the uh, driver uh, drive around this, this particular area, which is, you, you can see down here, these are all the... Uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, city area, uh, a lot of housing estates uh, in Singapore, and a lot of traffic lights, okay? Uh, so everybody is driving uh, quite uh, uh, slow down here, okay, because of the traffic light. And here you have heavy vehicle, okay? In other words, uh, this is where you have a lot of lorries and so forth passing in this particular area. So we just want to have a good feel, okay, as far as driving on different conditions. Okay. Uh, quickly, uh, the uh, driving data set uh, is available. If somebody are interested, uh, you can always uh, email me on that. These are some examples. Uh, in this particular work that we have done previously, is part of the NADO grant, which basically uh, uh, consists of the uh, Nagoya University, UT Dallas, uh, uh, SDSU, uh, and also the Polytechnic in uh, in. Uh, uh, Italy and uh, also Sabanji University. Okay, and this is part of the DSP Inca, which we have it as a biennial conference. Okay. Uh, anyway, the first thing that uh, what people will do normally is that hey, I have already uh, 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 captured all those uh, drivers speaking, uh, speaking, uh, and uh, somebody is talking, somebody is laughing. Uh, under normal uh, driving condition, the normal emotion, neutral emotion, and of course the sli sleepy driver, as I mentioned. So what you will do is basically, uh, most engineers will do, they just collect those data, train them, neural network, and then after that, hey, there you are, I get all those very nice percentage. Okay? And then after that, uh, you say, okay, I want to sell it to the market. So you start selling it to the market, nothing works, everything doesn't work. The reason is because you are training on something that you are testing on other speakers. Okay, you're going to have lots and lots of problems. So therefore, in this case here, we come out with another different set of uh, ideas, which, which we say is that, you know, if you take a look at psychologists, they would like to define emotion, okay, in terms of what they call the affective space model. And this affective space model defined to us here as far as activation, valence, and dominance. And in this particular case, Grimm himself okay, does a lot of experiment and he finds that the basic emotion of angry, happy, neutral, and sad okay, can be defined clearly as far as this particular uh, valence activation and dominance or the 3D affective space model. So based on that, and also based on this 3D affective space model, we now try to define where sleepy driver is, bored driver is, relaxed driver is, happy driver, angry driver, afraid driver, okay, if we want to have. And from there, we can have a very good idea, in this case here, how we can map from our basic emotion to that particular set of emotion that we want to do. Okay? So it's, it's a different uh, technique uh, that we find may be useful in our future generation to take a look at as far as understanding behavior of the driver itself. Okay? So what we have done here is that that is why now, now you understand why I have this Berlin data set, the NOR data set, and the combine of this Berlin and NOR data set, I train them. 
Okay, and because I have trained them, in the end, I have a very good idea from the basic emotion as far as the training and the rules. Okay, I use uh, three different types of algorithm. Basically, the simplified MLP, everybody is using it. And phase that gives me some fuzzy information. And I have this Genso, which is a uh, generalized uh, self-organizing feature, uh, fuzzy neural map. Okay, so Genso is something that we have in our lab, which we generate ourselves, and then the rest are basically just uh, available in the market. Okay, now with that, uh, we found that hey, interesting enough, I can detect neutral quite easily. Okay, because in every speech there will be this neutral or emotionless. Okay, we call it neutral. Okay, uh, but as far as talking, laughing, and sleepy, yes, there are certain percentage of accuracy that I can get, okay? So let me go and give you some idea here, okay? So accuracy percentage, even though we detect like 40% using some of this uh, algorithm, uh, when somebody is talking, somebody is laughing, especially in sleepy driver, I like that. Because if we can do a sleepy driver detection with at least a 40% accuracy for these two Enfys and Genso, in other words, hey, I'm getting somewhere. You know, I think the potential of trying to detect, okay, in terms, because my basis here, I'm using the Berlin data set and I'm using my no data set, okay, to actually try and detect this sleepy driver. So I do not learn uh, the, the, the network that I have from this particular set of drivers. It is something which is out sample, we call it. So therefore, this kind of achievement is really an interesting achievement. And I think pursuing this further can help us in understanding the driver emotion or recognizing the driver emotion in a more uh, robust manner, sort of to say. Okay? So in conclusion, it is possible to identify the driver behavior status okay? using speech emotion recognition, understanding that enables sleepy driver to be identified to almost 70% from the four classes. There are strong correlation between emotion and the driver behavior state. More work can be focused. Basically, what I'm saying here is that, yes, I'm looking at the basic emotion. Okay, from the basic emotion, we can break it down, okay, and really understand and analyze all these different uh, driver behavior state. So we can provide this an, as an alternative tools. We can profile all this driver information. And another thing is that you must also understand that culture plays an important role as far as detecting emotion. With that, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you very much.